Okay. All right. Where are we? Watch. Oh, I, um, apparently I didn't tell you this, but I'm telling you this. Uh, Addison's and Cushing's disease are extra credit. That's the extra credit question. Okay. In um, oh wait, oh yeah. In 1994, I tested the um, Olympic wrestling team. Did I tell you this? No. One of the things we had to do was scoop their testicles. There's a little scoop because men have there's an average size to a testicle, so you had to scoop it because if they were taking steroids to build muscle. Testosterone is produced in the testes. So if you're taking injections of testosterone, then you're, it will feed back on the testes and it will cause the testes to atrophy. That's why bodybuilders can wear those little tiny trunks. How big was the scoop? I don't remember. It was like a, you know, like a <laughs> thing you use to measure, you know, Ingredients when you cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blind. All right. This is why I bring this up. Watch. If you've ever been on steroids or like prednisone, they always step you down. You start out initially at a high dose and then they slowly bring you down. So, watch. Prednisone is five times more powerful than your naturally occurring cortisol. So if you're taking prednisone, then the cells of the adrenal cortex will begin to atrophy. They will begin to die off. So if you don't step them down, so if you're on a very high dose for, say, two weeks, say 60 milligrams for two weeks every day, when you go off of it, the cells of the adrenal cortex are gone. You don't have any. So you get this massive rebound inflammation. So by stepping you down and lowering the dose, that gives the adrenal cortex time to come back to life like Don Gatto, the cat. And you'll start producing your naturally produced cortisol from the adrenal cortex. Do you follow that? That's why they do it. And what does cortisol do to your blood sugar? It increases. That's why when people are started on some type of steroid in the hospital, doctors will write an order to have their blood sugar checked because they know it will increase their blood sugar. Say yes. That's cortisol. Anybody here ever been on any uh, prednisone for... Right? It increases your appetite too, doesn't it? Makes yep. It does. It increases your appetite because it um, raises your blood sugar and prevents glucose from getting into the H cells, so you become hungry. And long enough, you get a little moon face, and you get a little belly. Okay. Say, so, yeah. Guys? What do people take it for? Prednisone? Uh, it's recreational. Get high. Hey, let's come on, yeah. Come over, let's do some prednisone. Um, prednisone is an uh, anti-inflammatory, very powerful anti-inflammatory. So just like cortisol, cortisol suppresses the immune system. That's how it exerts its anti-inflammatory effect. The immune system produces inflammation. So people who've got like a really bad back or they got really bad asthma, they will be on prednisone. People with emphysema, they'll be on prednisone. Anybody here with emphysema? Just smoke a bunch of cigarettes for 30 years. You'll get it. Tell me you followed that. All right? All right, so let's go over the last hormone. Hey, did you guys get a thing at like at uh, 1 o'clock or 1.30, that presidential alert? Mm -hmm. 
Can I tell you, that's bothersome. The fact that the government can do that. Do you know what I'm saying? So on my phone, you know, with the camera, I put a piece of tape over it. <laughs> see, that's, see, I got tape there, too. Because they could be watching you. Look, watch, listen up, because this is true. Just because you think people are out to get you doesn't mean they aren't. <laughs> Here we go. Want this whole thing. Did I use this line? I do. That's Andre the Giant. Did I show you that? What are the odds of someone becoming a giant and their last name was the giant? <laughs> okay. And there's Wee Man. You notice he's got a normal sized gourd, right? And a relatively normal sized trunk, but he's got short arms and legs and these little sausagey fingers. Lack of human growth hormone affects the long bones of the body. That's why. So if he would have been given human growth hormone before the epiphyseal plate sealed, he could have grown to be a normal height. Uh, for women, it's about 17. For guys, it's about 24. So how tall you was at 17 is how tall you is now, roughly. Okay, here we go. I want th I'm going over thyroid hormone. Say yeah. I went over gold flap, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right, here we go. I should have just left it. Watch. One of the things that thyroid hormone controls is your basal metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate, BMR, is how many calories you burn at rest. Do people who are in a coma have to eat? Yes. Yes. And the reason they have to eat is because they're burning calories just to maintain their bodily functions, right? That's your BMR. And when you burn calories, you use ATP, right? And when you break off that third phosphate to release the energy, some of it is dissipated as heat. Say yes. So your basal metabolic rate to a large degree determines your core body temperature. Are you with me? And what part of your brain controls hunger, temperature, and thirst? That's right. So if the hypothalamus detects a drop in core body temperature. It will signal the anterior pituitary to release the hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. Are you with me? So the hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, does what the name implies. It stimulates the thyroid gland. Say yes. So TSH has no physiologic effects. Its design is to simply stimulate the thyroid gland. Now, you're not going to believe this, and somebody's got to stop me. But in your thyroid gland cells, you have TSH receptors. Oh, oh. And I'm spitballing, living on a prayer here, hoping for a miracle. What do you think binds to TSH receptor? <laughs> oh, you guys are bringing it today. So watch. When TSH binds to TSH receptors, it stimulates a pump. And that pump is called an iodine pump. And what do you think an iodine pump pumps? Again, you're bringing it. So the only organ of the body that requires iodine is the thyroid gland. We get our iodine from Morton's iodized salt. Say yeah. So when that happens, TSH binds to the TSH receptors and activates the pump. 
you begin the production of T4. T4, the 4 represents the number of iodine molecules, and the T stands for T. T4 has a name. It's called thyroxin. Are you with me? So once T4 is formed, it leaves the thyroid gland and enters the blood. And then T4 goes to the liver. T4 goes to the liver and is converted to the much more biologically active, powerful T3. And T3 is called triiodo. I O Do that's an O Thyronine. Triiodothyronine. Now, I offer this to all classes. I'll offer it to you. If you're willing to change your name legally to triiodothyronine, I will give you extra credit. No? Alright. So watch. How much extra? I'll guarantee you at least a C. <laughs> Watch. T3 is the most biologically active form of thyroid hormone. And I'm about to list the functions for you. Conjunction, junction. T3 principally, T4 to some degree. So notice how I made the T3 bigger than the T4, indicating the dominance of T3. See, that's proper teaching. Function number one, it increases your basal metabolic rate. And this is how it does it. And I want this. T3 increases literally almost every cell of your body increases how leaky they become to sodium and potassium meaning when t3 is around the cells of your body become more leaky to sodium and potassium the goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis right so if the cells become more leaky to sodium potassium what does the sodium potassium pump have to do in order to maintain the concentration of sodium in the blood and potassium in the cell? It, it has to work harder. And as we learned, the sodium potassium pump is ATP dependent. So the pump has to work harder because the cells are more leaky to sodium potassium. Therefore, when you eat food, that food will not be converted to fat in your liver it will be used to make ATP inside your cells to supply ATP for the sodium potassium pump. Say yes. And when you break off that third phosphate to make the pump run, what do you produce? Okay, yeah. Looking for something. You produce energy to make the pump run and heat. That's how you raise your core body temperature. Say yes. Guys, yes or no? Good. That's the big function. The second function is that T3 increases cell sensitivity to epi and nor epi. What does epinephrine do to your heart rate? Blood pressure. Boom. What does it do to cellular metabolism? Increases it. Say yes. So because cellular metabolism is increased, heat production is increased through metabolism, and your body temperature goes up. Say yeah. Function number three is it increases protein synthesis in literally every cell of your body. Watch. Oh, it 
people who are hyperthyroid, the connective tissue in the back of the eye, which is protein, thickens. And it causes your eyes to bulge out. So they get Betty Davis size. Tell me you got that. Right? Watch it. The other thing that thyroid hormone does in a feti, that's plural for fetus, is that it is intimately involved in the uh, development of the brain and central nervous system. So little babies who are born severely hypothyroid, they are usually mentally retarded. They have a, a condition called um, cretinism. And that's severe hypothyroidism during fetal development. Say, you got that. All right? Now, watch. Where is this? Hang on. Hang on. You guys just hang on. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, watch. Watch. What stimulates the thyroid gland to begin the production of T4 and then T3? TSH. TSH. So watch. If you are hypothyroid, meaning you have low levels of T4 and low level of T3 because the thyroid ain't producing them, what's going to happen to the levels of TSH in your blood? What is it? They go up. Watch. If I tell you to study and you do it, do I have to tell you anymore? Yes. No. You did it. So if TSH tells the thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3, does it have to tell them to do it again? No. But if the thyroid doesn't produce T4 and T3, TSH has to keep telling them. That's why people don't get it. They go to the doctor and go, well, my TSH is elevated. How can I be hypothyroid? Well, now you know. Tell me you got that. If you're hyperthyroid, what's going to happen to your TSH level? It's going to go way, way down. So hyper, low TSH, Hyper, low TSH. Hypo, high TSH. Say yes, TSH. Say yeah. That's how you do it. All right. So to get full credit, you need to talk about what is the what stimulates the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary and then its function. All right. Watch. Just, just listen to this or update your Facebook status. All right. This is a little clinical piece here. Ready? Have you ever heard of a condition called uh, Graves' disease? You've heard of that. Watch. Floating around in your body, you have these lymphocytes called B cells. B cells are like the Terminator. You ever see the original Terminator movie? Terminator was programmed to kill Sarah Connor, right? So what did he do? He let his fingers do the walking. He went to the phone book, found all the Sarah Connors, and then just killed them, knowing that he'd get the one he needed to kill. And here's the thing. If people would have just got out of his way, he could have killed her, and then that would be in the end of the movie. Now watch. When B cells are programmed, B cells release proteins called antibodies. You've heard of antibodies? Antibodies destroy foreign chemicals or bacteria or viruses. Are you with me? And they're specific. But in this case, 
what happens in people with Graves' disease is these antibodies that are produced, these antibodies, ants we'll call them, actually stimulate TSH receptors. So if you stimulate TSH receptors, what are you going to produce? T4 and then T3, and these people become hyperthyroid. Say yeah. Now watch. If thyroid increases your basal metabolic rate, what would be some of the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroid? Weight loss. Weight loss. Connective tissue increases, your eyes bug out. What's going to happen to your heart rate and blood pressure? It's going to go up because it increases the sensitivity of the cells to epinephrine. Say yes. Are they going to be able to sleep? Can you sleep when you're scared? No. So literally every biological function is going to be high alert. It's going to be functioning maximally. That includes your GI tract. So you're going to have diarrhea. Say yeah. What's going to happen to their core body temperature? It's going to be higher. So they're always complaining that they're hot. But everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Tell me you got that. Now watch. And again, this is what I'm trying to do for you. And clearly they're not working, but that's okay. I'm still okay. Watch. In order for epinephrine to exert its effect, it has to bind to a beta receptor, right? And you find beta receptors in your heart. So if somebody has hype, a hyperthyroid condition, their heart rate can get very, very high, and they can die from what's called ventricular fibrillation. So if a person comes into the emergency room with symptoms of hyperthyroidism, what they will do is immediately pay some on a beta blocker to protect their heart so they don't die. Tell me you got that. Then what they do, what's the only organ of the body that requires iodine? The thyroid. So they give them iodine, you take it in a pill, and attached to it is some radiation. And when the iodine pump takes up that iodine when it's radioactive, that radiation destroys the thyroid gland. Then they become hypothyroid, and then they got to take Synthroid the rest of their life. That's how it's treated. You know anybody who had that? Bring them in for show and tell, and I'll give you extra credit. Say, this is of some guy I found on the street who <laughs> hyperthyroid. Say, yeah. Guys? Now watch, if you know what thyroid hormone does, you should be able to predict what will happen if you don't have enough. So what's going to happen to basal metabolic rate? Yeah. It's going to go down. So when you eat, are you going to burn that in your cells to make ATP to make the pump run? No. So they will get tubby. Say yes. What's going to happen to their heart rate and blood pressure? Go down. <coughs> they will be tired all the time, sleeping all the time. Say yeah. Maybe that's what you guys should check your TSH. <laughs> Who's with me? And they're always complaining that they're cold. Their hands are fear, cold, all the time. So they can wrap up in one of those little grandma blankets. Say yes. You ever wrap yourself up in your sheets and blankets so much that you just, it like you struggle to get out of them? I wondered about that. Do you guys like sleeping? Yeah. I like sleeping. I like when it's about to happen, right? I'm like, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
Okay. Tell me you got that. That's hypo and hyperthyroid. Boom. Any other questions I got to go over? Yeah. What? Did I go over DKA? No. Okay. I'll do the Dawn effect too. Ready? What? You don't know. You were sleeping. What's 11? Right, I'm not going over that. It's extra credit. You do that yourself. You'd be a hypoglycemia. And the PET scan, too. Okay. I'm going over DKA. Okay. Say yes. Here we go. In DKA, your blood sugar is very high. 800, 900. Say yeah. And it's t typically found in type 1 diabetics, rarely in type 2. So you're a type 1 diabetic who is very, very sick or they didn't take their insulin. If you're very, very sick and you're a diabetic, what does being sick do to your blood sugar? Makes it go up. So your blood sugar, what up, G, is really high. See ya. Hey, that's good. Okay, watch. If you don't have insulin, can you get glucose from the blood into a liver cell? So the liver thinks you are starving. So the liver says, hey, the other cells of the body can use fat, but what's the only fuel that my brain can use? Glucose. Glucose. So the liver takes fat, and I want that, and converts it to acetone, beta, hydroxy butyric acid and aceto acetic acid these are collectively called the ketones and those ketones that are produced in the liver get dumped into the blood. What are you dumping into the blood? Ketones. Okay, but they're acid. acid. So what's going to happen to the pH of the blood as a result? It's going to go down. And what does a drop in pH and acidosis do to neural activity? Say the opposite. It decreases it, decreases it. So they can go into what's called a diabetic ketoacidotic coma. And they can die. Then they can't go to gateway. <laughs> okay, watch. I'm going to apply now previous knowledge. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here is the equation that you love to hate. If you watch uh, um, Jimmy Fallon, he's going to have this equation on there as a guest. They're going to have to bring him in very quietly because people in the audience may try to kill him. Okay, watch. This is some high-level thinking here now, folks. Watch. If the cells of the body, in this case the liver, are dumping <coughs> hydrogen ions into the blood, if they remain free floating, well, that's going to happen to the pH. It's going to go down. But you have in your blood, our buddy, our pal, bicarbonate. And bicarbonate's going to grab that hydrogen ion and lock it up in carbonic acid, say yes. So what's going to happen to the circulating level 
of bicarbonate and hydrogen ions in your blood, they will go down. So if this side goes down and forces the equation this way, what has to happen to the amount of CO2? It has to go down. Watch, if you got less of the less stuff on this side, you got to have less stuff on this side. So the CO2 has to go down. So you have to start blowing off more CO2 than normal. Say yes. So they will start breathing faster and deeper. Say yes. That's called Kusma breathing. Here we go. Wow, I'm going to show you a video. I am a big wow. Kung Fu. This little kid's a diabetic, insulin-dependent diabetic. His blood sugar was really, really high. So they're breathing faster and deeper because the cells are making acid, so the lungs have to get rid of more acid. That's why they breathe faster and deeper. Tell me you got that. That's DKA. You got a little kid. You know what he's thinking about right now? I wish I would have read the textbook. <laughs> Tell me you got that. Mm -hmm. Guys, what's the treatment for DKA? Well, what caused it? When why did they have high glucose levels? They're di <laughs> they're diabetic. They're sick or they didn't take their insulin. So either way, they don't have enough insulin. So what do you give them? You give them insulin. And what's getting sucked out of all the cells due to that high blood sugar? Water's getting sucked out of those cells and they're peeing it onto the gurney, probably. So what type of IV fluid would you give them to rehydrate those cells? What kind? You give them a hypotonic IV fluid. And if the blood becomes hypotonic to the cell, the water will be pushed back into the cell to rehydrate those cells. Say yes. So they usually give what's called, hang on, they give 0.45% um, normal saline or half normal saline, which is hi hypotonic to the blood. Say yeah. That's the treatment. Are you with me? And just so you know, if somebody's blood sugar is like 800, and they come in at 638 to the emergency room, you don't get their blood sugar down to 80 by 10. This is a several day process. These people are gonna be in the ICU for a while to get their blood sugar. It takes a while, because if you cause sugar to go into the cells too quickly, it will cause fluid shifts and their brain will swell. That's why you have to do it slowly over time. And how they check, watch. Once the liver starts getting glucose, the liver will say, hey, I ain't starving no more. So I don't need to convert fat to ketones anymore. So once they stop the production of ketones, then they can slowly drop that blood sugar. That's why they'll test for ketones in the urine and in the blood. Yeah? Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, for, on the cardiovascular quiz, yeah. If you write this on the top of your cardiovascular quiz when you take it, I'll give you extra credit. I'll give you 20 points of extra credit. Yeah?
These are the byproducts of metabolism. Watch, watch. If you start running, as soon as you start running, are you delivering enough oxygen to your muscle cells? Are you? No, you have to increase the amount of oxygen that you're sending them. So at least when you first start running, you're hypoxic. Hypoxic, hypoxia is lack of oxygen. Say yeah. Uh, When it's lightning out, <laughs> why does the lightning hit the tree? Why, why does the lightning hit the tree? knowest thing. <laughs> Watch, you better write this down. Better write it down. Electricity, blood, air, and most importantly, people always take the path of least resistance. Air is sucks as a conductor of electricity. It's terrible. A tree ain't much better, but it's better than air. So electricity is looking for the path of least resistance to the ground. That's why you've never seen a lightning bolt go like this. Boom, straight down. It's always because it's looking for the path of least electrical resistance. Say yes. Now watch, if the tree burns down, who's going to get hit by lightning next? Yeah, that's me. I'm a little hydrocephalic. You got, that's why if you're out in an open area, they tell you don't stand under a tree and get as low to the ground as possible. Tell me you got that. Blood takes the path of least resistance. Arterial blood always does. Now watch. If you were blood, which vessel would you want to flow through? A or two? Two. two. Better write this down. Better not pout. The larger the diameter of the artery, the less resistance to arterial blood flow. And where does blood always take? The path of least resistance. Say yes. Say yes. Watch it. I'm not writing it down. You're writing this down. These byproducts of metabolism are massive arterial vasodilators. They dilate the arteries that are supplying those metabolically active cells. Are you with me? Are you? So watch. Can I show you this? I'll show you now. Anybody work in a nursing home? You gotta turn people every two hours, right? Yes. Okay. Watch. Watch. Imagine this skin. Right? Like crack of your butt, shoulder blades, back of your head, heels. When you're laying on your back, those bones press on the skin. So watch. When they press on the skin, they cut off blood flow. Say so yeah. Is my hand still alive? Yes. Yeah, look. <laughs> you got me? 
So my, the cells of my hand are producing CO2, heat, ADP, hydrogen ions, and they're lacking oxygen. Say yes. yes. So when you relieve the pressure, the buildup of those byproducts and those cells are going to cause what to the arteries that supply my hand? They're going to dilate. So watch. I turn over. And look what happens to my hand. Did it turn red? <laughs> Do you follow that? So when you turn somebody over, the red areas are the parts of the skin that lacked blood flow. And the longer they stay red, the longer they lacked blood flow. How long can skin live without blood flow? Four hours, because watch, let's be real. Do you turn people every two hours? No. Right, they don't get turned every two hours. I shouldn't even have told you that. You know, hey, we got time. Let's look at the Facebook <laughs> status. <laughs> well, and what do they tell you to do to those areas that are red? Rub them. Rub them. Because when you rub the skin, it produces heat, and that causes the artery to dilate to increase blood flow. You know who will explain that to you? Nobody. Only me. I'm the only person in the world that knows that. And now, if I see you at Woodman's or maybe Festival Foods, we won't even talk. We just walk by each other like... <laughs> Here we go. Cancer cells. Healthy cells. When you have cancer, what are the most metabolically active cells you have in your body? The cancer cells. Tell me you got that, right? So these cancer cells are going to be producing CO2, heat, ADP, hydrogen ions, and they're going to be lacking oxygen. So what's going to happen to the arteries that supply those cancer cells? They're going to dilate, right? So what path becomes the least resistance for that arterial blood that's being pumped by the left side of the heart? to the cancer cells, say yes. So what they do is they give you, have you drink some glucose, sometimes they will inject it, and that glucose has attached to it a tracer. And when your blood sugar's high, what fuel becomes most readily available? Glucose. So when the little left ventricle contracts with that glucose tracer in it, the vast majority of that glucose tracer is going to go the path of least resistance towards the cancer cells. Tell me you got that. And when they scan you, it will light up. And that shows you where the cancer is. So here's a PET scan showing metastasis of cancer to the bone. That's how a PET scan helps determine the location of cancer in the body. And it takes advantage of the fact that cells always use the fuel that's most readily available. And when your blood sugar's high, it's going to be glucose. And it also takes advantage of the fact that the byproducts of metabolism are arterial vasodilators, so the vast majority of that 
glucose with the tracer is going to go towards the cancer. Now, PET scans are not good at um, detecting cancer, but they're good at looking to see if the treatment of that cancer is effective. So they'll give you some can they will give you some chemo, and then they will do a PET scan on you to see if these darkened areas have gone away. And if they have, then you know that the chemo is working. Tell me you got that. Do you have any idea how good that information is? Let me cut it out. Did I tell you what, when I go home tonight, I'm going to go to my bathroom and give myself a high five in the mirror. Rock on with my bad self. Okay, what else? Did I answer all the questions? What? What? Oh, the dawn effect? Okay, always put some softball questions in there. Right? Make you feel good about yourself. Hey, I know that one. I don't even have to study. Watch. Cortisol in your body increases from about midnight to 6 a.m. It peaks from 4 to 6 a.m. Got me? Human growth hormone, HGH, that peaks between 3 and 6 a.m. Is it stressful getting up? Yes. Yeah, it sucks. So you get epinephrine. And what does epinephrine do to your blood sugar? So the combination of cortisol, HGH, and epinephrine cause a rise in your blood sugar. So it is not uncommon for a person's blood sugar to be elevated most in the morning due to the effects of cortisol, human growth hormone, and epinephrine. That's called the dawn effect because you wake up in the dawn. Say yes. You got that? All right. One of the things... Um, can I just go back to uh, hypothyroidism for just a real quick second? Who's this? Oh, yeah, look at this. Yeah. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Look at how, look at how busy this is. What happened to two curved lines in a circle, lady? <laughs> oh, wait, this is for the NCLEX. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Oh. Oh. Huh. You don't need to know that. Okay. Watch. People who have hypothyroidism, typically, and it's in countries that are not well developed where they don't have iodized salt, they develop a goiter. A goiter is a hypertrophied thyroid gland. And there are little lobes to your thyroid gland, that's why you have these kind of lobey things looking. You got me? Now, this is what I want to point out. If your thyroid, if your goiter gets big enough, then what can happen is this. They will start developing a face and a personality. <laughs> and sometimes the goiter will actually talk to you. And if the goiter is evil, it may tell you to rob a liquor store or not read the textbook. There's another potential problem really quick. Sometimes the circadian rhythm of the goiter and yours are not in the same sync. So while you're trying to sleep, the goiter keeps droning on about something keeping you up. Okay. That's all I wanted to say about that. What, do they just surgically remove the thyroid then? Uh, yeah. Um, here's the problem with that. There are nerves in the neck that s supply your breathing and your ability to swallow. And what can happen is if you remove that thyroid gland, it can affect those nerves and you can die. You can get what's called laryngeal spasms and your larynx will spasm and you will die. So they usually, it's not the most uh, uh, 
aesthetically pleasing look, but it, it doesn't hurt you necessarily. So a lot of times they just leave it as it is. A lot of times people will put jewelry on it. There was one guy, I don't know if he's still here. Where is it? Oh, there he is. Uh, he plays the banjo. Now, he doesn't. The goiter plays the banjo. <laughs> Look. Here's evil goiter. Did you see that? <laughs> right. Yeah. He tells you there's worse stuff than Rob Liquor Store. Yeah. <laughs> tells you to trip your mother. Tell me you got that, guys. Okay. Uh, did I answer all the questions? Yes or no? Guys? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you uh, want to do uh, play Kahoot for extra points or no? no do you? Oh, it's kind of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we're definitely playing. Whether you want to or not. Do you want to or no? Yes. Do you? Yeah. Guys? Yeah. Okay, listen up, because this is true. Listen up, because this is true. Winner, 75. Second place, 60. 50 for third place. And 20 for the rest of you. And the lowest score will get a swig off my Diet Mountain Dew when there's like this much left. Yeah, isn't that pleasant? All right, here we go. You, you, you want to look at the goiter some more? That's an evil goiter. Don't you think that's a good word? Goiter. Go home as you're driving home tonight. Just say it to yourself. Goiter. Hey, goiter. Hey, goiter. I will give somebody... I'll guarantee them a B- minus if they legally change their first name to goiter. <laughs> hey, who's going to take the uh, who's going to take the multiple choice? Say a lot of you, please. I changed it. I did. I'm not even kidding. I changed it to make it really nice. What number for that charger? It's right here. Do you got an Android or an iPhone? Your iPhone charge. Too, so I can get the points. There we go.
getrickt. Yeah, sympathetic epinephrine cortisol. You just went over there. released from the anterior pituitary. Keep it trick. It follows curves in cytoplasm. Yeah, it's elevated heart rate. Kuzma breathing is hyperglycemia. Yet it's false. It's a buildup of ADP. You've been tricked. It'd be triglycerides. If your blood sugar is 800, you don't have insulin. You've been tricked again. <laughs> I just kill it. I get this little warm fuzzy feeling inside. <laughs> and you guys are tricked. That's false. They're still a type 2 diabetic. They just have to take insulin. Yeah, 
insulin shock is too much on some blood sugar, really, really low. DK, high blood sugar. It stimulates strong, it, it decreases triglyceride in the blood and it increases protein synthesis. That's wrong. It should have been uh, Cetal and uh, Krebs cycle. Uh, are you, you going to complain? No. That's right. You're not going to complain. I shouldn't have told you.
most razor butt trim. Isn't that special? blood sugar it's 126 that's how it's false it was on the diabetic handout in the course documents clear you didn't read it right and now you're gonna get all up in my grill 